when you're like, how the fuck did, did this program know my phone number? How'd this know that? Apparently, whenever you get like something, like you agree to those like those like you know that Tolkien esque <laughs> length of contracts. Like I agree to the terms. You're basically agreeing to, yeah, go ahead, watch me through my camera, and yeah, go ahead and robocall me. Yeah, I mean that kind of happens. Or it's like, or the other ones too. It's always like you forget is like, like okay, like Google. Like sometimes you'll search for something on that and it was like I just need to look up like a guy or something because every once in a while like fucking Bing won't work or something because there'll be some of those stupid websites be like oh we don't like it when you use Microsoft Edge or something like that it's like go oh, fuck yourself so then next thing you know you pull up Google but then the weirdest thing is like you're like why is that popping in my YouTube feed it's like oh oh never mind it's all connected I, I know why I know why now that I search for it on one thing now it appears in the other and so on. And that's why I'm almost some, like YouTube. I, I hate looking. I, I don't. I never want to look up like a random video sometimes when people send me them because next thing you know it'll just send me like a hundred more of those same fucking videos. It's so funny because well, the way I got there was kind of dark. I remember it, it's weird because I don't know how it came up because it's from a few. It's like from like by this point almost six or seven years ago. But I was talking to somebody and we were talking about the Trayvon Martin thing <laughs> when that happened, and he was in the guy who I was talking to was. <laughs> You, it was he was like basically saying like no i think the kid actually made the first move like no he fucking didn't you know we just kind of got into it a little bit like i'm like wait well, all right let, let's look up the 911 call so the 911 call so <laughs> the let's, look, let's see if it's connected <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah long, the long play of it no the, the 911 call and then like all right here's the other call all right you know and then i kind of proved my point it was it was you know it was kind of prove my point in that aspect because he made it out to be like this kid, he was like Did that kid just run out just beat the shit out of this old man like no dude it didn't happen that way i'm not no, i'm not trying to get political but that was now since i looked up the 911 call from what was it six seven years ago now it's sending me all this like it still like, pops up unarmed, in there. unarmed black man shot by cop videos <laughs> so, and then there's the fucking Sonic trailer that dropped today, which I looked up, and out of that, it's sending me all my thoughts on the Sonic movie. Yeah, I, I've gotten lots of those too. Just because it's like it's so weird. I don't know what it, it's like. I, that's sort of like recent that like you look. It's like, and that seems like a problem that should have been like ten years ago. Like you look up one thing, and then it just like fills your feed with that one thing. It's like you think if I looked up multiple things in there, then you might be like, oh, maybe he's interested in it. If I only look up one, it should be like, oh, he just. He was curious. That's it. Well, what's funny to me is I know that it's more than likely not even really a person kind of watching your feed. It's pro it's more likely just a program doing it automatically. And then if something happens, it sends a little flag and then like a programmer comes and looks at it. So I'm wondering like, what the fuck is with this guy? He's watching a lot of Sonic videos. And because he's watching the Sonic trailer, it's sending weird sonic deviant art shit his way <laughs> combined with trayvon martin videos i'm confused <laughs> yeah exactly starts making a, a really random combination with, with, of stuff. Gun, with gun debate videos too <laughs> so shit oh i don't know but um but that sonic trailer also oh, by the way old man orange yeah old man orange i'm spencer scott holmes i'm writing that again sonic trailer yeah sonic trailer though which um okay i'll say this this is like like i take it very optimistically Jim Carrey is Dr. Robotnik, I'm down with, okay? I, I think that, like, that works. I mean, it's the, literally the exact opposite of Dr. Robotnik. Instead, you got, like, a, so a big fat guy. You got just a totally skinny guy. But that kind of works, you know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll let that kind of go by. And this is how I feel about Sonic, though. Because now it's, like, the first time really seeing Sonic in, like, motion, you know? Before, it's just these, like, screenshots and weird posters and stuff. It's, it's just that weird thing where it's like, you know, his face is fine, I think. It's just his limbs just need to be fucking shortened. That's really at the end of the day. It's it's the arms and legs is like what makes it look so like uncanny and kind of creepy looking. I don't know. I'm I'll be a hundred percent honest. If I look at that trailer long enough, it's not gonna lie. I watched that thing like five times today. It does not look that good to me. At the exact same time, if I look at enough things, I'm like okay, some of the speed movements and all that, some of that action looks like it might be cool. Jim Carrey is Doctor Robotnik. That seems, he seems to be doing kind of old school Jim Carrey, which I'll be honest, this, this seems kind of like a weird like mixture of something that would have came out in the early 2000s with a, or possibly a little bit of like the mid 90s, kind of just the whole like 
Oh, or, you know, like the whole thing of like, oh, this character who doesn't belong here, Fish Out of Water story from the franchise, let's bring him into our world. So that's the 90s part of it. And then some of the other stuff about it seems kind of um, 2001-ish, 2002-ish. Yeah, that that's definitely the thing. Is it definitely feels totally like a movie that was made two thousands and they forgot about, and then they're like, "Oh shit, we already finished this. Let's just pull it out. We'll just revamp the CG a little bit and sell it today." Like it has that odd. It does not feel like a movie. It should be coming out in two thousand nineteen. Well, the thing about it is Jim Carrey. He's playing like the over the top Robotnik, and in the, in the trailer, I mean, it's fine. It's a, it's a comedy movie. I think you need to have a little bit of comedy in a Sonic movie. You don't want to be too serious. But the whole thing with it is, I don't know, Sonic just looks so fucking weird. And it's not just Sonic looking weird. It was just some of the other jokes they had in that were kind of, kind of, uh, fell a little flat. I mean, even though Jim Carrey wasn't all that bad, it was still that part where he's like, ee, ee, you're ir- irrelevant, where he's talking to M. Bison from Street Fighter, Ch- Legend of Chun-Li for a second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's just like doing like the robot talk, like, I am a robot, I have a robot vagina. Yeah, doing that shit. Yeah, that was a little that was a little weird. But um, aside from that, though, I'll say this: that Sonic in moments looks like uh, oh, that's good. Another moments like oh god, because you said his face. There's that one shot where he's looking directly in the camera, and his whole ca- his whole face is in the camera, and he's like frowning his brow, doing that like cocky smirk he's known for. Mm-hmm. That looked like Sonic. That looks like the character. Now, the thing is, his eyes don't have that weird uni-eye thing. They yeah. kind of take up most of his head. He has two, not regular eyes, but two, like, you know, separated eyes. So his face can, can make normal expressions. Because I'll be honest, like, Sonic, always, if you didn't know the character, you'd look at him and you're like, what are you thinking, motherfucker? You always have that, like, sly fucking smirk. Like, are you thinking about killing somebody? Are you thinking <laughs> about fucking somebody? Do you think you're better than me? Because you just always have that fucking smirk. So maybe that was the reasoning of making, like, taking away that constant frown his eyes have. But I don't know. Without that, it just looks weird. Like, when he just has normal facial expressions and he's, like, mouth wide open, and just like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, okay, it is different. I'm not saying that part isn't, but, like, I feel like I could accept the face. It's really what's when it's, it's just when I see his legs and arms. I don't know what it is. Like, they're just too long. I feel like they just need to be that shortened. Too. They just need to be fingernails. shortened. That's, the that's fingernails it. creep me out. Oh, yeah, that, that's weird, too. Well, it's weird thing, too. He doesn't have gloves on. That throws me off, too. Yeah. It sounds yeah. so fun. It's like if Mickey Mouse just didn't have fucking gloves on. You know what I mean? Be like, what the fuck's going on here? So, I that mean, and I, also, I, not, like, it sounds weird. I feel like this sounds odd, but I feel like the way that Sonic looks in that movie, he needs some pants on. I don't know what it is. Like, something just doesn't look right there. I know Sonic doesn't yeah. wear pants in the video game, but, like, it never. Sometimes it is, but that one just feels like his junk's just hanging out in that movie. Even though you don't see it. Like, it's, it will probably be like a lipstick thing. Or, like, I don't want to put too much thought into it, but I'm guessing it's something like that. Like, what if they do? Like, look, you said you want to make it more realistic. He just needs to have a dick hanging there. <laughs> just swaying throughout the movie. It's just fucking as like, long as his leg. Well, here's the thing. Back when they were doing original concept for the uh, character creation, before he was a hedgehog, he was a, uh, he was a rabbit. So his hair would be... his ears would be flopping in the wind as he ran fast so earlier so earlier version like we just had a big dick like flopping behind him as he ran like oh that'd be kind of a weakness you're right something grab it and swing around like don't want to do that <laughs> just cover out of dr robotnik swinging around like you know like how like mario swings bowser that, that's in mario 64 <laughs> just dr robotnik spinning around in a circle oh that sonic fetish art shit probably would have kicked off a lot sooner if that was the case <laughs> yeah exactly but um but um i'll, I'll say this I, I hope the movie's really good i really hope it's good um it, it's gonna sound like so weird and maybe so shitty but i hope it's good or i hope it's really fucking bad one of those two i don't want it to just be okay yeah. i don't want it to just be like oh that was a little better than i thought it was gonna be but it, it was it was whatever i want to be really good or a legend really of chun fucking- or, like, really fucking shitty, where it's the point where, like, we can kind of laugh about it. And at the same time, people probably learn. We can laugh about it, and we can learn, probably won't do that again. Yeah, it's it's that weird one. It's, like, it's a classic, like, you never, you never really want to be middle of the road. Because middle of the road means that people just generally don't remember you. They'll remember you if you're either extremely good, or if you, like, really made an impact by being extremely bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Ant-Man and the Wasp. 
not a bad movie, but not really a great movie, and not even really a good movie. It's just like, eh, it's whatever. So it's kind of like, eh, you know, I didn't. I know some people really liked it, but I just thought that was kind of a whatever movie. And I. I kind of remember say something, even though it's not, even though it fucking sucks. I remember Fantastic Four better than that one because, like, oh, dude, remember this part, remember that part, how silly that was? Well, I like Fantastic Four, like, way more than Ant Man and Wasp. Oh, yeah, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, like, the, even talking about the fucking dumb um, remake one, where it's just like, Okay, what, what are you, here's your training room, oh, Invisible oh, yeah, Lady. Yeah, yeah, I guess we got nowadays it's like, which Fantastic which Four are you talking about? Talking I thought you talking about, about yeah. Fantastic Four 2. The four well, even game. like, whatever. What, what the what the fuck ever? All it, right. Well, I mean, there's, there's so many fantastic. There's three movies called Fantastic Four. There's right? four of them technically. There's three of these movies called Fantastic Four. One, oh, Fantastic Two, Rise of the Silver Surfer, whatever the fuck. Yeah. But no, but like they all. I'll be honest, I think they all kind of fucking suck. I mean, I'll, I'll say this. Actually, the Roger Corman one's kind of fun. That one is. Well, that one's just it's interesting. I feel that's what that movie is. It's like. It's sort of like almost like an experimentation film, and that's what I like about that one. And I actually personally, I like the second one, the the first Fantastic Four of like the second series. With Chris so fucking, Evans the sounds first so Chris fucking Evans? confusing when you're saying the Chris Evans one. I, I like the first one. I'm not saying it's an amazing movie, but I feel like it's a good like center of the road movie. I know I just talked about like you don't want to be center of the road, but I feel no. that's how that one is to me. Like I enjoy it. I don't. It's not one of those one. It's not Dark Knight. You know, I'd love, I'd love to see the the Fantastic Four Dark Knight like you know movie. I mean, by like that caliber, that would be mm -hmm. awesome. But um, well, like the Roger Corman one, I remember just the Roger Corman one. Even though it was tacky and campy as it was, it was kind of just fun. Just for like, how the fuck did you? Okay, okay, like the part when they're they get in the wedding in the, in the wedding limousine, just they have that fake ass hand. <laughs> like a, it's like styrofoam, just like like just waving in the wind as they go away. <laughs> It's like the special effects are so cool in that movie because they're just all practical, and that's what I think is just so neat about it. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, I'll say this. Um, what was I going to say about the Sonic movie? I thought I was going to say something more about it. Like I, like I said, hope it's good, and if it's not, I'm not mad. I kind of, you know, maybe when I was younger, I would have been like, the Sonic! At this point, like, yeah, whatever happens, happens. I already got so many other things I like that... Uh, already so many movies off so many other things that I really like that were really good, so... Well, yeah, and that's how I look. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go see the Sonic movie first day anyways because uh, who the fuck cares? It's Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm there. And uh, whatever it is, fine. Um, I'm just glad that there is a Sonic movie than there not being a Sonic movie. That's all I have to say. Even if it's just like... It's always stepping stones. That's the key thing. You know what I mean? It might not be perfect, but, you know, it's just going to be a stepping stone. We'll just see where it goes from there. Yeah. Well, I'll say this. Um, I think... Uh, so, one second. Fixing something with my audio here. Um, I think with something about Sonic, what, I just look at, like, Detective Pikachu. Movie's not even out yet. Movie's not even out. And... I'm assuming it's going to be good. It looks good. Early responses say it's pretty good. But I'm kind of wondering, like, if... I don't know. You look at that. That just looks like something they just embraced what it was. Like, we don't have to find reasons for why there's talking animals, why everything, why we live in this Pokemon world. We just are. You're in or you're out. And mm -hmm. but we're going to have some clever writing and maybe a heartwarming story to go along with it. That's what people are saying. So I don't, you know, so then you look at this thing like, okay, we got to make sense out of a blue hedgehog. Like, you don't try to make fucking sense out of a blue hedgehog. You just roll with it and have a, have a funny script. That's what you do. I know, and I feel that those are the two movies that are going to kind of compare each other. I feel it's the Detective Pikachu and the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, because they're both coming out the same year. They both should look kind of the same, but obviously one's going for an old-fashioned take, I guess you can say. Well, one of them just is being pretty much what it is, you know, so it's being its kind of an original story, too, but, you know... I don't know. We'll, we'll just see, because I feel the Detective Pikachu, I like super double down on that movie. Like, I got all kinds of merchandise from it already, so it better be fucking good. You gotta like it now. <laughs> I know. I, you have, like, I've, five I've got, 7 Eleven cups off that thing. I do. I got all kinds of ones. I got Slurpee cups, and I got, like, the tea cups, and then I even got a Detective Pikachu stuffed animal. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, God, this is, like, you know, N64 days all over again at 7 Eleven. What more you're can the I buy? You're... You're in the pregame. You're at that point, like, you know, there's a kid who buys, like, a Jar Jar Binks toy before it comes out. He's gonna be the coolest character! I know it! <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I'm doing. It's like, I'm, I'm going all in on Pikachu stuff, so I, I can't wait for it. I do want to say this, though. I promise I'll get off Sonic here in a second, but watching the trailer, I knew they were gonna do that whole thing where they bring in the military, like, there's a fucking hedgehog on the loose. We gotta track this thing down. Like, I just would like it if it goes the full distance of being, like, 
we think he has ties to ISIS. <laughs> Just make like, a... like Sonic has to escape Guantanamo Bay or something like that. <laughs> that that would be awesome. You know, I mean, they treat him like he's a terrorist of some kind. Yeah, yeah, like he has Tommy Lee Jones coming out of like he's at like a waterfall. Like I'm innocent. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> If, and he can't swim too, so he's doubly fucked. Oh, yeah, it's like he needs tails to pull him out of there. Well, I, I think that's for the sequel. You, I, you know, they're doing like they're gonna do one of two things. All his friends' characters, or at least tails, gonna come in at the very end. Like one of two things, or one of three things actually. Come in like in the sequel, or come in at the final battle, or kind of just come in like, oh look, I just got here. That's cool, you know. Yeah, like a post-credit scene or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's that, or it's gonna be something stupid, like there's like a coin on the ground, and like Sonic picks it up, and it's just got like the tails emblem on it, like one of those kind. I've got my tails right here. It's like, oh fuck, okay. Like, well, we I made a reference to the character. Like, yeah, you made a fucking stupid reference. It's inconsequential. You know? Well, it, it's like, like, well, like, those those like it, that'd be fine if it was two thousand and three. Right <laughs> in two thousand three. Fuck you. By that point, that'd be fine if it was like ninety. 7 or 98 by then maybe but even then you'd be like all right get your he's gonna be in the sequel right oh fuck you think there's gonna be a sequel happening of this shit no <laughs> yeah that's like i feel like they've already backed out of that before the movies even came out but um i don't know i i still feel like whatever we'll watch it we'll see what it is it could be one that was like fun and like and a weird sort of ironic way maybe kind of movie like it's not the sonic you wanted but you're still gonna have a good time hopefully I want to see it. I really want to see it, just out of pure curiosity. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you. If someone offered me an opportunity to see the movie right now or to travel back in time and see a, a couple of pitch meetings, I'd choose the pitch meetings. Cause I want to fucking know how that how they landed on some of the shit they did just going off this trailer. Yeah, exactly. It, this is the weird thing, too. I almost want to see that Sonic movie more than almost any other movie this year. And I know it's not going to be better than a lot of these other movies, <laughs> but I just feel like way more like, oh, what's going to happen in this one? You know How? what I mean? It's just like, it, it's, a, it's a very curious experience, I think. Well, I, I, I feel like I kind of already know. I, I feel like I already know, like, something. I there's already a part in the trailer, which I feel like, just though in movie structure... I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll find that they'll have some Deus Machina thing for it. But going off the trailer, I think I already feel like how there's a part where Sonic's in the final battle, and then like Cyclops and Tika Sumter are like, "We gotta help you, Sonic!" Like, "No, you gotta go back home!" And he throws the ring, which rings apparently work as portals in this movie, and they tr they go back to like Minnesota, where the fuck they're from. <laughs> yeah. Because you saw that part where they're falling off a building in San Francisco, and then he throws the ring at him, and they're like in a front yard. So I'm pretty sure, like, okay, that's how they get out of that. That's how they get out of the movie. You know. Well, I guess it's it's not necessarily like the ring rings. It's like the the ones you jump into, like in Sonic Three. Yeah, which is like okay. I mean, that's. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. Like I said, I'm curious. I'm not. That doesn't make me. I, I watched that trailer, and I was not mad. I was not angry. Like I seen some people. I'm like, okay. Let's just see where this goes. I don't have high hopes, but I am really fucking curious. Yeah, exactly. Same here. But um, since we're doing kind of like a catch-up, since it's been a little bit of a while, um, but let's talk about Justice League. We've totally missed out on that. Well, it came out like a week and a half ago, I guess, by this point. But Justice League versus The Fatal Five, the new DCU movie that's a continuation of like the Justice League kind of unlimited style, the old Bruce Timm section. Which I felt like I was going into this one with like high hopes, maybe not as high hopes as Sonic the Hedgehog, or not. I guess Sonic's not really. I don't know what I don't know what you call. It. Is it is it high hopes that I'm going to for Sonic the Hedgehog, or is it just like super curiosity? Like I just don't curiosity. know what I'm gonna find on the other side of the rainbow kind of style. Curiosity. curiosity yeah. Definitely. High hopes is I guess a uh, Detective Pikachu, but um, but yeah, J Justice League and the Fatal Five. That one kind of came out, and I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that was how I felt about that. Like, it's so weird because it feels like that one felt like a shoe in. You know what I mean? Like, how could you not like it? Well, then again, I, I say, how could you not like it? But then they're like, you know what? We're going to throw in these ones. We're going to throw some Legion kids in here because, you know, we all know how you love Legion. All right. So here's the thing with that. Um, I uh, we, were, we were late to this because I was out of town for about a week. You weren't even out of then, town. You're out of country. You're on an espionage mission. You're going exactly. solid snake. Into the Netherlands, yeah. To know their ways. Did you plant a bunch of American flags? 
Yeah. Every, anytime we went to a little like uh, anytime we went to um, a landmark, I was like, guess what this needs? American flag. Just plop it right there. Oh, the Anne Frank house. Guess what this needs? Bam. Sorry to get there sooner. Moving on. <laughs> but no, but um, going on. No, actually, I didn't go around laying down American flags. But it. You should have. It, it, you know, that did cross my mind. It did cross my mind for a second. No, um, went there because my my girlfriend's sister was getting married, and my girlfriend's from the Netherlands. So went there. I met more of the family. Kind of just did some of the tourism stuff, and then came back and. Jump, like one of the first things I did when I got back was stop by and grab that movie and part of me was just kind of watching it like alright I'm being 100% honest here is it the jet lag or is this movie just okay which you never really hear me say that often about a DC animated movie maybe Batman Ninja at least that had really cool action scenes but well, well at least Batman cool. Ninja almost like here's the example Batman Ninja kind of reminds me almost like what the Sonic I feel everything's gonna relate to Sonic the Hedgehog somehow but, but the Batman Ninja kind of reminds me of like if Sonic's kind of bad it might be in a weird Batman Ninja where it's like okay well it's maybe not the greatest thing ever but it does just do some stupid things that made me sort of laugh sometimes too at some point, a bunch of monkeys pile into each other, and they, they turn gold, and they fight a, a Joker robot made out of wood and paper mache. You can't say you've ever read that in a Batman book before. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, like, I feel at least Batman Ninja has some takeaway from it, you know what I mean? Where Justice League and the Fatal Five, I just didn't feel like had a whole lot of takeaway. For being, like, a movie, it felt like I watched, like, maybe one 20-minute episode, and I'm not saying it was, like, short, but it just felt like not a whole lot happened. It was, like... Of course, it was like, in the future, 3,000, you know, Starboy and his, you know, gang of Legionnaires, which are always, I don't know, I, I, I can never seem to get into the Legion. I don't know what it is. Like, I, I don't I, give a fuck because there are a bunch of people that it's in the DC universe, but it's in the future. But when everyone's dead, except Superboy, I'm like, all right, well, I mean, I mean, I guess if you like that, that's cool. But I mean, I, I kind of read DC shit for DC shit and I get it's kind of its own thing, but Fuck the Legion. I don't care. I'm going to say fuck the Legion. Fuck the Legion. I never gave a shit about Legion. I tried. They put Legion in everything. Like, <laughs> Legion keep on popping up and like, oh, the Legion's here to help you out with something. But guess what? They've popped in everything I've, like, every series I've read, they popped in for a minute to say, hi, we're from the future. I don't give a fuck about them. And I don't think I ever will. Yeah, I, I always want somebody to kind of show me, like, give me a win over a Legion kind of story. You know what I mean? Or I, I actually really thought, I'm like, well, maybe it's a DCU movie for Bruce Tim. Maybe Bruce Tim can show me why the Legion's good. And then it was this one. It was like, God, if I need a reason to hate Starboy more, it's this movie. They, it's like, th this is pretty much the movie of, like, the problem child, like, superheroes. And it's like, I think it's got that stupid, like, modern message of like you know what you can have issues and problems and it's okay you can be a superhero too bull fucking shit the people that have problems in this one would most likely be supervillains. i'm just gonna fucking say it i do not believe Starboy would be a hero in this somebody who's that fucking messed up and needs drugs and shit they, that's a super villain that is not a hero kind of reminds me of um going to marvel here for a second i never read a solo series but there's the sentry who is the strongest character in existence in Marvel, mm -hmm. apparently. And he just can't... He, for a minute, he was a member of the new Avengers. I'm not sure what happened there, but he was there for a minute, and they had this whole like like four to six issue arc of him just being unsure of what to do and him creating this whole void around himself and all the Avengers and everybody else in, DC, in the Marvel uni universe comes in and say like, it's okay, man. We're here for you. We're here for you. We're going to help you get through this. And, but then he's just so like, fucking like, he's so like, you know, if, uh, like, like, hot water burn baby, hot water burn baby, but has like fucking, you know, like powers of a God can create shit, can destroy shit. And it's just one Brain of, of a child. <laughs> and it's just one of the, and he's always like, I don't know if I can do it. The void, the void, dude, just. You, you got over the void, like, six issues ago. Let's do this shit again so you can punch something. And it just becomes, like, this thing that just... He's easily manipulated manipulated by Norman Osborn and all this other shit. So it's like, why the fuck is this guy here? And that's kind of why I feel about Cosmic Boy. 
Or I mean, Star Boy, or whoever the fuck that was. They're all boys or girls in the fucking Legion, just. Fuck them. They're not man or yeah. woman. You know what I mean? It's just like, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like oh, I have to have my 3000 AD, like, CVS drugs so that I can function normally in society. It's like, well, maybe if your fucking mother didn't give you a bunch of shit when you were a kid, you wouldn't be this fucked up. Like, I don't know what happened there, but I'm sorry, but that that to me is one of those ones like, bullshit, you ain't a fucking superhero. You just, w- you, you just wish you were. You're a ticking time bomb. You know what I mean? Batman wouldn't allow you to be around. I'm just going to say. Well, plus, it's one of those things where, because this is almost... Because I love Justice League Unlimited. Not every episode was amazing. I'll, I'll say this. Even their their Legion episode where Supergirl goes back in time and most of the Legion is turned on themselves and he's, she's with Brainiac 5 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Brainiac 5 is okay. I'll yeah, say you know, Brainiac, Brainiac 5 is kind of a cool character. Because he's, he's Brainiac, but he's good. And he's 5. So, yeah. <laughs> it took five times for him, for him to get it right. So, you know. <laughs> so Brainiac 5, or is it Brainiac? Yeah, I think it's Brainiac 5. Brainiac 5, I like. He's one of the few members of the Legion that's cool. Now, beyond that, it's one of those things where he, it's just, I don't give a fuck about anybody. And this movie reiterates that. And and they have their group of villains, which I don't really know that well, the Fatal Five. And they're going back in time, like, okay, well, they're finally Justice League, so I can I can get past that. And, all right, they're, they're, they're a Legion villains, so it makes sense that one member of the Legion goes with them to, to stop it. Mm-hmm. But then they get there, and it's like, everybody I give a shit about takes a back seat. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman Mr. Terrific. Well, I will and say, Mr. Mr. Terrific is the saving grace of this movie. I think he is the part that he's, is cool. And it's good that they really, find... He barely does anything, though. I do. He barely does anything, but that's that's more than he's ever done in like an animated show, I feel. I feel like it, it's like a step forward for him. At least he finally gets to do something more than like sit at the computer terminal, because I always think that's a cool character that's never used enough. Yeah, I always liked him. He's always a great character. And one of my favorite newer series, which is unfortunate because it's probably going to get canceled, is The Terrifics, where it's him, Plastic Man, Metamorpho, and a girl named, I think, The Ghost or something like that. I'm not sure if she's an old character. They dusted off the shelf and revamped her if she's a new character. Mm. But it's this weird, oddball team that seems kind of like a DC- DC's answer to Fantastic Four. So. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, like the first issue, they're like, okay, we're what we're doing is we're dealing with the aftermath of the um, Dark Knight's metal situation. So that's kind of what brings them together and then moving forward. So it's just a really cool series, and that really made me like... I already liked Mr. Terrific, but that made me like him a lot more. Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet then. I, I, just, I always just think he's a cool character, and really I just know mostly from... Like, he pops in a couple of comics here and there, but in the Justice League, he was always the guy operating the Terminal or in the Justice League uh, cartoon show. Or if they got like if they if the uh, base got attacked, like oh I should probably spend floating metal balls after them. Yeah. But then you know this is this is a case where you get to see him do more, which is cool. And Miss Martian is cool, is a likable character too. Yeah, she's not bad in this one either. But it's just Jade. I don't even dislike Jade, but it's just I'm having trouble understanding. I'm not sure if it's how is Jade or no Jessica. No, it's Jessica. I was like Jade. That's the Mortal Kombat character. Well, no, there's there's like a there's a there's a um. I think it's uh, the original, original OG Green Lantern and his daughter. Al- is it Alan Scott? Yeah, Alan like Scott. That? Uh-huh. I want to say his daughter just has the power of the ring naturally, and she's a member of the Outsiders. Um, oh, I think oh that's right. I, yeah, no, I know who you're talking about. Well, it's like, this. I remember when this Jessica character kind of came out, and I never read any of the Green Lantern ones because of I said it before, it's like, once that Jeff Johns run ended, it was like the perfect, it was like you couldn't ask for a better ending to Green Lantern. And it was almost kind of like, you know, I remember I tried out the one where it had like the Muslim guy who carried around a gun. And I was like, that's fucking stupid. Why would a Green Lantern need just a handgun in his hand? You know what I mean? Like that, that I thought that was kind of lame. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the gun thing's dumb. I, don't, I mean, I, don't, I, I remember some people were pissed off that he's Muslim. That that about, I don't care that if he's Muslim. I but I just think I, the yeah. gun part was just... I thought that, that's the part that stuck out to me. It was like, why is he... What the fuck? Well, this gun mm-hmm. represents me. Okay. Sure. You're going to yeah, piss Batman off when either. you show up to the Justice League, but go for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know why Green Lantern needs a gun unless he, like, imagines a giant, like, like you know, planet-destroying gun or whatever the fuck. But whatever. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. If he has something cool like that, you know, but... um, I don't know. It's like the Jessica Cruz character, I think. I, that one's another lame one, too. It's just like... 
I'm sorry, somebody who has high anxiety, the ring ain't gonna fucking choose you. You know what I mean? The ring's not fucking retarded. There's there's obviously somebody on Earth that is much more important than you. It's like, why? It's like they're making characters for, like, people that are like, hey, you are you got problems, you're fucking messed up. Here, here's a Green Lantern for you to relate to. It's like, no, no, no. Here's Guy Gardner. Here's a guy for you to look up to, and this is how you should be better in fucking life. You know what I mean? That's what you need. You don't need somebody who's down at your level. You need somebody above to look up to. You know, and I feel like that's sort of what the Green Lantern's supposed to, you know, Jon Stewart, like Hal Jordan, these are all strong figures and so on, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the Kyle Rayner character is one of those ones, like, I always feel like, he's one of those characters, like, I kind of get it that's like, because he's the artist, so he can kind of make, like, cool, like, designs and drawings and so on. He always felt kind of like, you know, just like the extra Green Lantern you almost didn't really need. I feel like they could have really stopped it pretty much like John Stewart, like after Guy Gardner, Hal Jordan, and John Stewart, as far as like that kind of Green Lantern section, like how how many more Green Lantern humans do you need? You know, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. you, I, I feel like I'd rather see you focus more on the aliens. Well, uh, the whole thing with um, with what's her name, uh, Jessica, Jessica Cruz. Cruz, I think is a is a different character. Maybe if she maybe there's a story about a superhero that had a recent issue and is recovering from that. That I understand because everybody has their ups and downs, but the idea of you just became a lantern and like, you know, that girl who's just getting over the death of her friends who witnessed the murder on a camping trip. So they thus themselves got murdered her. But, but I mean, I think she has high anxiety. She's on medication. She has trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, she'll get over it. Like, uh, well, Maybe now is not the best time to figure that out. Like, like that kind of shit just seemed kind of slick. I don't have a problem if a character's in a low point and that's maybe a, a story arc for them. Mm-hmm. But maybe for that be the way we were introduced to them, not exactly the best way. Well, no, because it's like, the thing is, it's like, it's not even like a story arc. It's like, this is just who the character is. It's just somebody who's taken drugs and like hates herself. And so on. it's like, I'm sorry, the ring ain't going to fucking pick you. There's much better people out there on the earth. You know, I, mean, I just think it's one of these, these are these, these PC kind of like characters that kind of came out where it's like, you know what? We're, you know, you're supposed to look up to somebody like Superman because he's just always doing what's right. And he does the best for himself, no matter what the situation is. He doesn't just go and cry at home like a fucking wuss. Or here's the thing, Batman's fucking parents died at 10 years old. You don't see him bitching about it. You know, I'm surprised it never came back around to make a parallel about that, where he talked to her about his parents dying or his <laughs> witnessing death. Or, they, why the fuck they didn't do that? I, I don't know. It's like, dude, he could have just came around and just fucking slapped the shit out of, like, fucking Starboy and Jessica Cruz and be like, stop fucking moping and bitching around and stop taking your fucking drugs. You know what I mean? Be a fucking man. You know what I mean? Throw those drugs down the toilet. You don't need these. I just think it's one of those things where it's like... Mm, I get they're trying to do the whole thing of like, okay, heroes aren't perfect, but at the same time, I just saw... Unless you're Batman, (laughs) Superman, Wonder Woman. (laughs) Who barely talk in the movie, even. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Well, I don't know. All right, well, let's let's break the movie down. This isn't me trying to kick this movie in the dick, because I love DC more than I love Marvel, but let's be 100% honest. What happens? Uh, Members of the Fatal Five get captured by the Legionnaires, and they're brought into present time. And then in the meantime, like Star Boy or Cosmic Boy goes after him because some of them are trying to sneak, sneak, sneak back in time too. So Cosmic Boy goes after him. Well, they're going and... back in time to get the, the one Fatal Five dude's like wife who for some reason could only be trapped in a prison back in like, you know, our time. I don't know why that. Oh, because there's a couple of the characters. Oh, because they're trapped at Oa. That's right. Because for some, because Oa's not there in the future. Yeah. So then. From there, they bump into Cosmic Boy, and then from there, like, oh, we think he's crazy. Oh, wait, no, he's not. He's telling the truth, but he is kind of still sort of crazy, and he can't handle things without his drug, and he can't get his drug And He's running past, around fucking so. naked and trying to fuck police officers. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And then from there, just like, basically, they, uh, Fatal Five start attacking. They go to Jessica Cruz. Hey... We know you can get our guy, our, our our people out of Oa, but if you stop, uh, if you if you if you do that, we'll stop blowing up shit around the city. And then they do that, and then the big battle takes way, and that's kind of all this movie really is. Yeah, can be dick. That's all it really is. And that's all it is. It's it's a fight, and I'm not saying that the fight's not interesting and not kind of cool, but like the action's good. Yeah, the action's good, and and it's. It, 
it's not a bad movie. It's not like one of those ones, like, I, I'll say this. It's, it's not that I wouldn't watch it again. I definitely would throw it on again because I feel like it is definitely. I've only watched it once, and I have felt like it all, might need a second watch, but at the same time, I didn't know if I – it was almost kind of like – maybe not at the moment. I, I don't know if I can do it twice, like, in a row because it's just one of those ones, those – the problem characters, it just kind of bothers me. Like, I don't know what it is. When I just see characters just, just, I don't know, people in life just moping around bitching. It's like, you live in fucking America. What the fuck do you have to complain about? You know what I mean? Like, in Starboy, you live in the fucking 3000. You got a bunch of fucking friends. Get over it. You got a fucking suit that looks like space. Shut the fuck up, disco dancer. I'll say this. There was a little scene that I liked, and this seems more like kind of a, one of the more smaller, subtler things they actually would have in the DC universe type of thing. I like how when Starboy, when they think he's crazy, or Cosmic Boy, there's Starboy, there's Cosmic Boy, I get it fucking mixed up. Yeah. When Cosmic Boy is in Arkham Asylum, I like it how he's friends with uh, Harvey Dent, and Harvey Dent kind of looks out for him, sort of. Like, this whole thing of like, all right, well, out there, I'm a criminal, but in here, we're stuck here together, so I'll be kind of, you know, when you get to know me, I'm not really that bad of a guy. Yeah, I, I, I thought that scene was kind of neat. I like that one a lot, too. And then the Harvey Dent's played by Bruce Timm. Oh, that was Bruce Tim? Uh-huh. I thought that was kind of cool. I saw him in the credits. I was like, oh, that's neat. Yeah. Oh, that's so, it. There, some... that's, all, that's all that bent-up rage of doing these things forever and being tired of making them. <laughs> it's like, there, there's moments in this movie that are kind of cool and so on. And it kind of bums me out that a movie that kind of has a main, or has like a Green Lantern as one of the main characters in it. It's just like, I think if Jessica Cruz could be a cool character if you just got rid of the, the high anxiety thing. I just think that's... It's the wrong character to have that for. And I know somebody's trying to make... They're trying to do something like, it's a challenge, you know what I mean? Like, she, you know, she's given the ring and she, like, has to, like, overcome her own fear. And, I mean, like, I see what you're doing. It's, like, one of those, like, art school people that's, like, thinking a little too hard on something. It's just, like, I don't know. I'm sorry. It's just, like, no. No. It's just, like, I feel like you almost need to be a fearless character to have that ring. Sort of. Like, if you're somebody fucking moping around, like, using up the fucking battery to, like, fucking, like, charge your iPhone in your fucking apartment while you sit there and, like, cry and weep and moan, it's like, no, no, that's a fucking waste. You know what I mean? Oh, it doesn't fucking want you. Yeah, it's just one of those things where uh, I really want to like it, and I thought I bought it thinking I was going to love it, and then I'm watching it, I'm thinking, like, is it jet lag, or do I not really care about this movie that much? And then later we went to Cisco's bachelor party, like, so, Justice League. I was trying to tempt the waters because I was afraid. I was going to be like, what, you didn't like it? Like, thinking maybe I was the weird one. Like, we're on the same page. Like, really? Yeah. Oh, fuck. I, I, was, I was nervous the two-hour drive over here. Right? Yeah. And it, it's, you know what's the funny thing is? I thought that the Miss Martian character was going to have some type of, like, issue, too. I mean, she has, like, the fire one, but I was like, whatever, that's the fucking... That, 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 that just comes with, like, the, the race. Is that if you're a Martian, you just have a fear of fire. I don't, it just kind of happens. But, like, I'm kind of glad at least she wasn't, like, thrown in that same, too, because I thought it was going to be like, shit, is this going to be, like, three people just, like, it's just, like, literally, like, Batman has to, like, you know, police around these, like, kids who can't even, like, manage their own lives type thing. I don't know. I just Batman feel- does seem kind of like the chaperone, like, I don't want to fucking be here, It's but it's my month, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like. It's like, you know, it's like, here, here's, like, my, uh... I- robin in training but it's not really i'm training it to be my robin's just training it for somebody else's robin so she can be part of the just i don't know what the fuck i'm doing there's like a few small moments that are like okay like there's the part where she said uh, where he said to her like i'm not here to babysit i don't work with children and then she just turns into tim drake robin for a second he's like point taken just walks past her yeah exactly now that, that, that part's kind of funny and kind of a cool little nod too it's kind of really here's the thing actually when it gets down it here's the thing everything with cosmic boy and Jessica Drew, whatever her name, Jessica Cruz, is the weak shit. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, that's the majority of the movie. Everything yeah. else seems to be all right. I mean, the villains are kind of whatever, but everything else in it seems to be like the characters, like Superman, Batman, Mister Fantastic, Wonder Woman, Miss Martian. They're all great, but it's just why do these two characters? take up so much of it you know yeah I, I get it they're trying something new and you know i mean like you know you, you can never you know dock somebody for trying something different and going with a different strategy but i just feel like i don't know it's like when i when i go like i don't want to be kind of like i feel like that those characters give me sort of stress like when i watch them like i get fucking anxiety i'm like god this person's fucking pissing me off like when i watch it and it's like i don't want that in a superhero thing you know what i mean like if that was a villain that'd be one thing but like when i'm trying to watch a hero and it's like they can't, they're, they're still having such a hard time just overcoming just something that should be as simple as throwing a fucking punch. 
You know, it's just, I don't, I don't know. It, it was just kind of like, it, it maybe it was kind of a frustrating movie to sort of watch. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, I mean, the next one's going to be great, which is Batman Hush. <laughs> yeah, the, the next one, shit, they give you the, the that's the thing, is you, you buy this Blu-ray of anything so you can watch that preview for Hush. Yeah, I'm like, all right, maybe this 22 bucks weren't totally wasted. I know Batman Hush is coming out soon. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anything's wasted because it goes in my collection, so I have to have them all because I'm not missing a single one of them. So, but uh, it's it, here's the thing: it's like I'll probably throw it on again in a couple of years, and I'll see what I think of it later on. I'm not, I'm not saying just here Justice League vs. the Fatal Five. I don't think it's a not watch movie. I think it's definitely worth checking out. Give give it the one time shot. It's just not worth really going out of your way to really watch it. If that makes sense. Yeah, I'll be 100% honest. If I probably saw this movie sooner before I bought it, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those ones. Like, I'll say it's, it's, it's like, my barometer for, like, DC movies generally, as far as the DCU ones go. I always look at um the Batman, um, fuck, what's it? Uh, Gotham Knight. Gotham Knight is kind of, like, the low-end one, and I'd probably say probably Batman Ninja maybe around there. See, the one thing about Batman Ninja is Batman Ninja just has that weird shit in it that's, like, it's not really, like, the greatest movie, but there's just such weird stuff in it that I almost give it a little bit more credit just because of how, like, goofy... I've never it... seen that before. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is I give it credit for, like, that. So that's what kind of keeps that one kind of floating up higher. But this... <laughs> you never seen Krilla Grodd trying to get Batman to suck his dick. Exactly, that's what I mean. Like, so... Batman, the warm springs are so nice. <laughs> you should join me. That's what I mean. Is like, I feel that... See, that one would be a fun one for an audio comedy, Terry, at some point, just because it's so fucking weird and goofy. But, um... Yeah, I feel like Justice League vs. The Fatal Five, I'd say it's pretty much, like, one, like right there with Batman, um... I keep wanting to say Gates of Gotham. It's not Gates of Gotham, but Gotham by... What the fuck's it called? Gotham by Gaslight? No, not Gotham by Gaslight, because that one's good. Um, the the other one. The, the one that came out around the Dark Knight. Oh, Go Gotham Knight. Yeah, Gotham Knight. Yeah, that one. I feel it's like it's right around that one there. The low bar section of DCU, which, once again, not about the worst movie, but, you know, mm -hmm. not, not nothing special either. Yeah. So, I guess that leads us to probably the thing where everybody's been talking about this for by now, and we're a little late to it, but... Oh, yeah, but then there was Avengers Endgame, too, so this is our, like, battle of Justice League versus Avengers. What will be the best one? And I, I was really hoping that Justice League was going to hold that crown, and... No, no, definitely Avengers is better than Justice League versus the Fatal Five, sadly enough. Not Aquaman good, but it's still good. I'll be 100% honest, I actually liked Avengers more than Aquaman. I saw Aquaman a little bit ago. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I, I, think well, I, mean, I, I just I like was... Aquaman. I think Aquaman just blew me away how good. Or else it's, it's not Hellboy good either, but. Well, Aquaman's one of those characters. I like Aquaman. I think he's a cool character, but I like Captain America, Spider Man, Hawkeye, and Hulk more than I like Aquaman. So. Um, but Aquaman's still a really awesome character, and that movie was good, and I think people were kind of being a little too harsh on it. Dude, that movie's fucking amazing. That movie's like a pure four out of four like superhero flick, in my opinion. Same with that Hellboy movie, too. That movie, oh, so good. I still need to see Hellboy. I know. Sadly, I think it's knocked out of the theaters because of Avengers, because it just took up, like, every slot, you know? Except for they could keep hours. that stupid fucking Christian movie in there, too. They go in there, the breakthrough. We're in the great county for it. <laughs> well, I think probably most counties probably have it. That thing is probably jam-packed after church on Sunday. Like, come on! We gotta go see the Frozen Boy movie! Yeah, with the fat lady who probably broke the ice when she was walking on it earlier. I haven't seen the trailer. I just remember hearing God, I've story. seen that trailer so many. I've seen that trailer more than I've seen any other trailer. Probably in my entire life in a theater. I, I don't, more than I don't the know dark how I've seen this. More than the Dark Knight in the summer of 08? <laughs> probably! <laughs> Shit. That, that, that one, it played on everything except for Hellboy. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... But no, the, what I like about Avengers too is right off the bat. Well, first off, let's just let's just say this. Let's say this. Spoilers ahead. Lots of fucking spoilers. Well, yeah, if we didn't spoil fucking, but, but I think people would realize that by the time we spoiled Justice League for them, they don't give a shit. <laughs> exactly. Well, then fuck them if they don't give. A, I mean, I know because I remember of Avengers like literally like the day after one of the guys from work were like, I was like. Dude, you want to go talk about Avengers? Yeah, let's go get something to eat. We'll go talk about Avengers. And we're like, we got a booth, thinking that would be like, okay, we'll be in a booth so people can't hear us. But then it was just like, the waitress was like, you could see her behind her, like, covering her ears. I'm like, oh, I guess we're being too loud. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I like well, how right off the bat so starts off yeah. Hawkeye, because that's the thing I always feel is like, Hawkeye's kind of got the shaft, like, in the last couple of years. You know, he, he always has gotten the shaft. He just never seems to get enough screen time, in my opinion. But this movie, I feel, kind of brings Hawkeye around a little bit more. This is an apology to Hawkeye. Like, Jeremy Renner, you've been here for a while, and 
we this is us saying sorry we've kind of made you because apparently a lot of stuff with hawkeye a lot of the decisions they made were apparently just scheduling conflicts like one of the reasons he i think it was him but i want to say it was him and robert Downey jr and avengers i might be misremembering this but i want to say one of the reasons why they made him a villain and the first avengers the whole mind control thing mm -hmm. is it was scheduling conflicts like well where can we get him and how can we get him in there and essentially, we just need a scene where he's there at the end. We have a reason why he's not there in the first place. So that's the reason why they, I guess, because you know most of his scenes are separate from everybody else for a while. That's true. So that's what I that's what I heard about that. Another thing, Captain America two, originally aside from Crossbones and the rest of Hydra, Captain I mean I, uh, Hawkeye was going to be tracking him down. There's going to be a couple fights between Hawkeye and Captain America. And that was where you're really going to see why he's such a badass. And at the very end, it's revealed like, oh, no, no, no. He wasn't a bad guy. He was a double agent. Him and Captain America were on the same side and knew what was up. But scheduling conflicts. Hmm. Yeah, because that's the thing is, yeah, he's always felt like, you know, he's got kind of like Avengers 2, I think he gets some moments in there too, which is kind of nice. But for the most part, he's just kind of a character who's just kind of there for like a moment. Or something like that. And then it's kind of like, oh, he's got a family. He's got to take care of these eight kids that he's, like, found. And so on. It's like, oh, okay. That's the, just ruling Hawkeye out of here. But then this one just starts off. you like, that fucking family's gone. Okay, Hawkeye, what are you going to do about it? He's like, I'm going to go fucking kill some people. That's what I'm going to fucking do. I'm going to go full, full on, on Punisher. Punisher. <laughs> yeah. So it's Ronin. Yeah, so he turns into Ronin Hawkeye, which is like, like, oh, dude, that's fucking badass. And he's going around just fucking murdering Yakuza's and cartels and just like, I don't, it doesn't show any of it too much except for like one samurai battle. But like, I was like, I, shit, I could have had the whole movie of fucking Hawkeye just going around murdering people. Like, make that their like one rated R one. Just like, let's just have like the Hawkeye Punisher crossover movie. Oh, oh, that would be so cool. Well, thinking back on that, I want to say that was made to look like one long... Sh Maybe it wasn't, but I want to say that was made to look like one long, like, Ronin-style samurai fight, which was fucking awesome. Like, I'll, I'll be 100% honest. This movie has some speed bumps in it that are like, okay, that kind of stands out. But, you know, like, ma mainly some of the comedy shit. Yeah, but it's got the classic, you know... They could probably minus about 50% of the jokes out of the movie. I'll say this. Here's the thing. None of the jokes, I think, are actually really bad. It's just... There's just a lot of them. They just they feel like they take me out of the movie for a split second. I feel like the fourth wall was broken, and then I'm well, back I'll in the movie again. You know what I mean? I'll say this: it's not like some other movies where something very sad and serious happens and they bring in a stupid joke. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say the jokes are paced out in a way where it's I don't really. There's been enough time that's passed. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like there was none of the, there was never a joke in there that just kind of like pissed me off. Like, oh, dude, are you fucking kidding me? You just totally ruined that movie. There was nothing like that. It was just like just enough over time that I was like, you know what? You could you could just stop it. You know what I mean? Like you, you could. And it's weird. It's it's not the care. It's oddly it's not the characters you think. Like I think Robert Downey Jr. really doesn't do anything technically wrong joke wise in this. He, his characters just kind of like normal. This is the this I think is one of the best times where this and Civil War. I think are probably the two best times with him as Iron Man. Yeah, it's just like one of those ones, like, oddly, it's like the characters that, you, that sometimes had problems in the past being kind of, like, too jokey. It's not him. It's like, a lot, it's weird. It's like some of the other characters, like, because even, like, War Machine has some weird fucking lines in this movie where it's just like, what? Like, I can't remember them off the top um, of my head because I only watched them once, but it was just enough that I was kind of like, that, it, it was like, well, it was not that it wasn't a funny line. It was just such an unnecessary line. Well, thinking back, so there was a point where I was reading just a lot of Marvel because I was reading, um, it was back when I was reading New Avengers, back with Brian Michael Bendis, and that's where it was like Spider-Man, Wolverine, Captain America, Iron Man, um, Spider-Woman, Luke Cage, I'm not sure if I said him already, in Century. And, you know, the, the team would fluctuate and other people would come in. And a lot of that jokey back and forth shit, thinking back on it, that would happen in the comics. Like, I was thinking about, there's the Back to the Future conversation they're having, and this. And they're all saying, like, wait, are you saying Back to the Future is bullshit? This and that, like, all that. That actually seems like something that would be in a Marvel comic. And it's, a lot of times, it's just the placing of the joke was the problem. But like I said, here, most of the placement is fine. The only thing that really kind of um, got old to me, but maybe it would, wouldn't be better, maybe better in, like, second viewings, was Thor being kind of like Lebowski. And I get he's kind of like supposed to be jaded and kind of like, you know, PTSD and all like 
you know, shell shocked and feeling like a failure, so he's drinking his problems. So I get that, but it's I think they kind of beat that over the head a little too long. But once he actually has the scene with his mother, I think from there on in, it's like okay, it's not as bad. Yeah, I will say that that's kind of that's the one weak leg of the whole movie. I think is Thor. I mean, granted, when it comes back around to like the action at the end, he makes up for it all in that point, but. It's almost like, okay, he starts off totally badass, you know what I mean? Like, they go to find Thanos, which Thanos, once again, I think, had the right idea, because look at him, he's fucking, like, living the life. He's out there, like, fucking Ryu, like, on his, like, plantation and shit. And just, like... Or his farm, made a plantation. Well, it's a plantation. Plantation is a farm. It's just because it's... See, plantation, one of those many things that gets, like, a bad name, but, like... Plantation of one. There you go. Yeah, well, yeah, just because it's plant... Plantation doesn't mean slaves. I hope that nobody knows that. It it technically just means I know that, I know that. I just, yeah. But um, he's out there and so on. And then, of course, fucking the Avengers come to crash the fucking party, like, just blow up his house and so on. And then, like, you know, Thor gets to fucking chop his head off, which is, like, badass. But it's, like, once they get to the point where, like, they finally come, like, we need to get Thor back again. And it's, like, he's, like, living in the town that fucking Aquaman, like, <laughs> stays at, seems just like. a few plucks down the road. <laughs> you know? But, um, he's there and it's, like, I think that first joke is kind of, it's fine. Like, when they go in there and Aquaman's got, like, the beer gut and he's hanging out with the guys from, like, you know, Hulk Planet or Planet Hulk. and Hulk Planet. Hulk Planet. And, uh, you know what I mean? He's got the beer gut, and he's just, like, drinking beers. Just like, whatever, five years, fuck it, you know, I just gave up, you know? I think that's fine, but I think the second that it's, like, you want to come back and join the Avengers, he should have been, like, like, two, three days later, just, like, been back in shape. Like, just, you know what I mean? Just been like, oh, yeah, I just went and worked out in, like, the hyperbolic time chamber or some, some stupid shit like that. You know what I mean? Just pull something out of your butt that could work. Well, I thought it was going to be something like a, uh, I just... I'm gonna give him credit for having the balls to do what they did, having fat Thor. Like, yeah. the idea of, like, that's a ballsy choice. Because he is, that is a dude sold on sex appeal. That's like having, like, I don't know, like, someone, like, let's say, oh... Brad Pitt. Not even, no, I'm gonna say... Tom all right, let's say, let's, let's say you got, like, a bombshell actress like Amber Heard playing mm-hmm. Red Sonia. Who is a character rocking around a chain mill bikini? Which is a and beer gut. In the third movie, she's like, fuck it, I'm done. You know? So it's just like, that's a ballsy choice, because that's a reason why a lot of people go to see that movie, is because she looks good. So doing that with Thor, that's another ballsy choice right there. Well, I'll even so. say this too, is like, because that's technically, if you look at old pictures of Thor, like he is, he's never like just like a, he's, he's, you know, he's got like that old fashioned, like strong man thing where he's still got kind of the gut and everything like that, but he's got big arms and so on. So I felt like it gave kind of an old fashioned Thor kind of look like almost a mythology type style, but it's like, it's, it's not just like that. It's just the fact that he's kind of like moping around and he's dressed like the big Lebowski and then like they're giving him like stoner jokes and so on like that. I mean, he looks cool because he's got the beard and uh, I even like kind of his hair is kind of like partially messed up and so on. Like, I think that's a neat look for him. Just kind of get rid of the, like the kind of like the, like they treat him like he's a kid who just got out of like high school and rented a place with like his buddies. And all they do now is like smoke weed and like drink beer. And it's like, as I said, Fortnite. yeah, and play Fortnite. It was, and here's the thing: in five fucking years, anybody can play Fortnite. That's all I had to maybe. say. Maybe we'll see what happens. But um, maybe maybe if it's Fortnite two or three. But uh, you know, what I mean, that, that's what I just kind of thought. I, I just think this was once they they made that joke last a little too much. I think it should it should have just yeah, he could be fat, but maybe just have him be back together by the time he's out of that apartment. You know, because I mean, I, I sort of get it. it's like. Because, you know, the, the, in the Marvel movies, they've kind of fucked Thor over just a bunch of times. I feel like that's sort of what they did to him. Like, I think they just really wanted to break, you know, the Avengers mightiest hero by going like, we killed, you know, not only we killed your world. We killed your father. We killed your brother. You know what I mean? We destroyed everybody, you know, the, you know, the fucking Warriors three out of here. Lady Sif. Who knows what happened? You know, it's just like everything for Thor's world's even gone. You know, it's like even fucking Natalie Portman. She's she ain't even fucking here anymore, too. Like everything's gone for you. So I know like what they're doing is they're just trying to take a character and like how, how many times can you kick a character in the balls and push him down the stairs until he's at like literally rock bottom. So I, so I get it in that sense. But instead of doing it, playing it like almost like a character, like kind of working his way back up, they just kind of make it off like he's just like this bumbling stoner guy just kind of like hanging out and it's it's almost just a little too it's like a, a joke that's a little too long for a movie called avengers and end game you know what i mean if this happened in ant-man and the wasp i probably would let it bypass a little bit more i guess the whole thing with that is he's a character who's 
it starts off as a joke, and I get I get it. This is like a literally a three hour movie, so they're trying to have a little bit of levity at the same time. Though I think it's something that starts off as a joke, and as it goes on, it becomes more of like, oh, this is kind of depressing. This is like seeing a friend who's like addicted to heroin or something kind of like that. As it goes on, I think it becomes a little bit more like that, mm -hmm. and they start to pull back. Like it's it's when they're in the planning phase when you first see them, and then they're doing they're planning the time heist kind of thing. That's where all he's bumbling around, acting stupid. He goes to Asgard, to Thor 2, of all the fucking movies. And then, from there, it's like, okay, he slowly starts to kind of come back. And then from the rest of the movie on, he didn't really bother me at all. And it wasn't even, like, that they were all bad jokes. Like, that, that's the thing about a lot of the Marvel jokes, like you said. Most of the jokes are even good. It's just yeah. kind of weird placement of them. Yeah, that's how I felt. It's like, realistically, if the movie was a comedy, like, I'll say this, if it was like Teen Titans go to the movies, well, these jokes would all work. That's They're all good jokes. It's just, this isn't Teen Titans go to the movies. You know what I mean? This is, should be... I, I feel like that's the thing that the Disney Marvel kind of has a hard time is they can't... They, they almost can't find like the good separation between... It's almost like, okay, let, we'll do a DC thing. You got Lego Batman and you got Batman the Dark Knight. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. two separate entities, but they're both Batman, right? Well, you're not going to put those Lego Batman jokes in the Dark Knight, are you? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. how I feel like what Marvel sort of does is they take like those Lego Batman jokes, which are great is for when you're watching a comedy and I love it. But like if I if that was in the Dark Knight, I feel like that would pull me out of the movie. And that's sometimes how I feel in this one. Now, granted, this one's not nearly as bad. It's not as bad as Guardians of the Galaxy 2 for some of their jokes. And it's not as bad as, of course, Thor Ragnarok. That, that, that's like the that's like the Justice League versus the Fatal Five of the marvel like cinema universe almost no i liked ragnarok more than other movies i think ragnarok it's more of um because a lot of people that's like their favorite marvel movie i know me, some it's people like love I, well here's the thing about that movie it's like i think it's like action wise it's got some great stuff in it it's like it's one of those movies where like 50 percent of it's really good but it's like the other 50 percent like it's almost just bothered me more and more the more i think about that movie the more i just kind of go i don't think i'd go back and ever watch that one again i just don't know if i could I've seen it a few times since then, and if I accept it for what it is, like, okay, yeah, it's a fun, good movie, but it, it's not, um, the comedy does take me out of it a little too much, but there is, I like the, I like the idea of it's like this 80s inspired sci-fi movie that should be kind of a B-movie, but it's actually, you know, Marvel budget with Hulk and Thor, so... I like the movie for that. Yeah, you know, that's it's I mean, not it's perfect, got, but it's I like got it. that. It's got an amazing concept, and that's the thing is like, yeah, there's so much good stuff in it, but it's almost like it's the perfect example of like, you almost have as much good stuff as you have, you have just as much bad stuff, and it almost like weighs it out to like a neutral level. I don't know. I I, I come out of that movie liking it. I I didn't walk out of it liking it as much as I thought, but watching it with like a second and third viewing, like you know, what? I like this movie. I don't love it, but I like it. So hmm. it's kind of like that. But um. Coming out to this movie, I'm going to say this. I, I, I kind of see this movie again, and I'm probably not in theaters because it's three hours, you know. And, Plus trailers and all that stuff. Yeah, so I'm probably going to wait till it comes out on Blu-ray or whatever before I see it again. But all that being said, I think this might be somewhere in my top five Marvel Cinematic Universe movies because this movie, it literally, it did a lot of shit that I didn't think it was going to have the balls to do. And on top of that, they did... A thing that so many trailers have trouble with now so many trailers i feel maybe you don't know all the plot twists they're all the lines but you kind of know okay i can see that's probably somewhere in the first act that's somewhere in the second act that's somewhere in the third act so you kind of get the, you kind of have an idea of where everyone's going to go throughout the movie this one had the, like everything in the trailer most of it was shit from the first 20 minutes of the movie and then maybe a couple random sh quick shots of captain america or iron man from the last act yeah that's what i like yeah the trailer doesn't really give away a whole i mean you knew that they're gonna fight thanos that was kind of like that was sort of how the movie was kind of set and they were gonna bring everybody back like except for fucking it, vision i don't know why the fuck Vision. like he's a robot vision vision died in the because the stone was pulled out of him it was everybody oh was everybody i guess that's true i forgot yeah because he was it's, so it's like well we you know, we could have probably wished him back with the stones, but uh, we just didn't think about it. You know, he's a robot. He's not really our friend. He's not real people. He's like, you know, hey, shit, he's only the original fucking Marvel, you know, comic character, but fuck him. <laughs> he's apparently, he might get his own show with Wanda Maximoff, but we'll see what happens then. Hmm. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like one of those ones, so it's like, um, 
was going to say. The one thing I did like a lot, though, is I think it has a really good, solid team because the fact that you minus out a bunch of, like, the other characters and so on kind of lets you be able to focus on, you know, seven characters or whatever they kind of have in it. And I think the choices that they had, the, the pe- pretty much the people that they left over were generally, like, the right ones. It's like, I think by having Hawkeye, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, or, um, Thor and Hulk, and having Smart Hulk, which is, like, one of the best parts of that movie, I think. It's the yeah, sm- Smart, the Smart Hulk thing choice. is, like, genius right there. I'm like, finally, I'm so glad they kind of went that direction. And it works so well in this movie. And then, um, and then you got Ant-Man, and then Black Widow, and is that everybody? The Nebula and Rocket. Oh, yeah, Neb- and Nebula and Rocket, I think. Do we say War Machine? Oh, yeah, War Machine, too, which is, it's, like, all these characters, I'm like, these are all sweet choices. You know what I mean? I mean, the only character I guess I don't care for is Black Widow. But it all works out in a great way in the long run. So it, I am totally fine for her being there. Well, it's one of those things where... Because uh, oh, when I- Infinity War came out, it, upon more viewings, I liked Infinity War. When we when we first got out of it, like, you know, I liked it, but I wasn't in love with it. Which I thought I was going to love it. But I'm kind of realizing you kind of need Infinity War for this movie to happen. Mm-hmm. Because the thing about that is... That, like you said, this kind of gives you a chance to focus in on more other characters. Where Infinity War, it's more of just a weird collection of scenes trying to build up to something at the end. So, Iron uh, Captain America didn't get as much of a scene. It was like some, like some of the characters were just kind of there. And it did feel like, okay, this is just a part of a bigger story. Where this almost felt like, even though there's clearly a bunch of shit that happened beforehand, this felt like more of a centered in focused movie like this is one story right here yeah that, this one's definitely like locked into that and so on what, like more, way more than infinity war was infinity war looking back i like that movie more than when we first did the podcast on it mm-hmm. but i think this is a much stronger movie and it's just one of those things where I'm, I'm gonna feel like a total bitch saying this but i actually cried three times in this movie as long as, you, as long as you didn't cry, cry, or cry when Black Widow died. That was the only thing. Because when, when that happened... I was laughing when she died because I knew I felt, that you'd be so happy. Because there's all these parts that's like, you know, they do things like, we have to make the sacrifice for the sorrow one, just like they did with uh, Gamora in the last movie, and so on. And I was like, oh shit. Because that's, that's what I've always seen. In all these movies, I'm like, if they're going to kill one character, I know it's going to be fucking Hawkeye. Because I just know, because most people don't care for Hawkeye. Most people are like, Hawkeye? He's like, not cool at all. He's got like a bow and arrow. And it's like... It's, it's more than that. It's just it, it, that's not. It's not just what he is. Damn it! But um, well, here's the thing about that scene. First, when they're when like they have to get the uh, soul stone, and they're talking about who's who. One of us has to die. Who's it gonna be? I was initially scared because I was thinking, well, it's a woman, so you know, you know, the man's gonna be like, I'm a man. I'm supposed to die. Well, there's that. They mentioned they have a Black Widow movie coming out. So that's popped in my mind, and then I'm like, all right, well, they say a Hawkeye TV show, but there's a girl Hawkeye, and at the same time, like, Kate Bishop. But then on top of that, I know there's been other, there's been other Black Widows. Other people have taken the name Black Widow, but uh, Natasha Romanoff is the main Black Widow everyone thinks of. So I was like, fuck, here goes Jeremy Renner. So I was I was kind of nervous for a little while. So it went from me being, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, yes, he made it. He le- then, uh, then it went to me just kind of laughing and people turning and looking at me just because I know how much you don't like Black Widow. So I was like, I bet Spencer's happier than a pig and shit right now. And, and let me <laughs> rephrase this. It's not that I don't like Black Widow. It's I don't care for Scarlett Johansson as much. That's just kind of how it is. She's gotten better as time has gone on in these movies, but it's just like my initial thought of her when those first couple Avengers came out was like, whew. But um, like, and it was, they kept playing with my emotions too because they kept going like, is it Jeremy? Is it, is it her? Is it Jeremy? Is it her? And then finally at the end when the, she fell, like when most people were like, oh my gosh, that's so sad. I was like, whoo, oh God, I was sweating bullets there. I was just so worried for Jeremy. How many times do you watch a fight, like a badass fight, which is, I'm going to kill myself. No, I'm going to kill myself. And they're just like tripping each other. To, like, I want to jump off the ledge first. And uh, fucking the Red School guys just in there. like, Jesus Christ, get fucking over with. I got things to do. <laughs> I was thinking when they go back in time, when I don't know how Steve Rogers reverses that when he goes back in time, but when he goes to that one, like, oh, fuck, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
It is good. The weird thing that's funny is like they, they do all these things where they start making fun of uh, Back to the Future, but it's like the weird thing about this, this is like one of the only other other things in the movie I feel like could have been like kind of minus down at least a little bit is they do sort of the Back to the Future part two thing where like they keep going to like different, like, I mean, some areas are brand new, so that's fine, but like they go to places where it's like, you've seen this before, now see it from a different angle. And it's kind of like, oh, that, that's something I, I never, as, even as a kid, I'd never liked that in Back to the Future 2. I love the beginning of that movie, but I always felt the end when it just feels like it's just kind of rehashing the first movie just from a different angle. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay. Like, I even feel like when they go back in time, I feel like they almost could have just go, gone to, like, a brand new area, almost. I mean, a, a couple of the characters do go to new areas, but it would have been kind of almost interesting just to go... You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I guess they wanted to do a nice, like, tie around, like, oh, here's Avengers 1. Remember this battle? Let's see it from another angle. And then, you know, here's I Thor think, 2, and here's, you know. I think it's two things. I think it's a, uh, it's a greatest hits. Yeah. And on top of that, which Thor 2 got on there somehow. But uh, greatest hits combined with, I, I think there's some things. Because the thing about the, the battle of New York that didn't bother me because, oh, we get to see what happened after the fight. And that's kind of interesting. Yeah. And then there's a whole thing with them bumping into themselves, and I thought that was fun. And then the only one that seemed kind of, um, like, lackluster was Thor's, Thor and Rocket's trip back to Asgard, just because they didn't, there was no big action scene. But at the same time, that was more of just for Thor to bump in and talk to his mother and have an emotional scene with her. Mm-hmm. But uh, I want to say the Guardians one, even though at the moment it just seemed kind of like a reason just to make a reference to Guardians, it comes around full circle because Nebula, they, I guess she has the same Wi-Fi password as past Nebula, <laughs> so they kind of have this, so they're like, someone's on my fucking network, what is this, what's her information, oh shit, what's her IP address, there you go. Yeah, it just all kind of combines together and so on, so it makes sense because that's how Thanos and everything learns of what, what, they're like, oh shit, we gotta go fix this problem. Well, I will say, I thought it was funny with uh, the whole thing with watching Star-Lord do his dance, because they're playing Redbone, Come and Get Your Love, and as he's doing that dance with the headphones on, and it cuts to him, what they see, they see a guy just like, eh, just, just, just stomping in the water, like, that's a fucking idiot. Yeah, no music whatsoever, and so on. I was like, when like, they opened up that tomb, and like she just walks in, and he's like, whoa, whoa what are you doing? And you're like, like, do you think they're going to put a stone with no booby traps? And she walks through, like, yeah, exactly. Like, they're acknowledging some of the criticisms other movies got. Like, fuck you, we know. Because I remember that was one of those things where... Because every time a big major movie comes out, there's always somebody... Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me get this right. You have a priceless artifact with no trap. Like, all this type of shit. Like, oh, just... The movie just fucking came out, you know? Can't we at least give it a few months? Like, I remember the one, what, what kind of stopped me from reading Cracked. I mean, the, I was already kind of at a point where I like, hit and miss with them, but I was just getting tired of it. It was just like, Logan is just a ripoff of Children of Men. Here's why. And, like, read through it, like, okay, you know what Children of Men is ripped off of? The Seeker. You know what the you know what the seekers rip off of a bunch of old folklore and other folk tales and oh yeah these are these are just western tropes so it's one of those things like this movie already has that but I like how this movie kind of went back and addressed some of those things and kind of like, oh, go fuck yourself kind of way yeah I, I kind of like that too it's like that kind of works out it's like yeah it's like you know how you got past the trap he had the fucking key that's all we need to know yeah it, yeah it's like yeah you know I mean so, so, some some people, people some people want to know like. You gotta hold their dick for them while they piss. Like it's like you got like okay, well, in 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 a uh, in a uh, Dark Knight Rises, why didn't we see? Why weren't people questioning how Bruce if Bruce Wayne was dead? Like because it was the end of the movie, and we didn't get a chance to see what everybody else was doing because it would have ruined the moment. We were watching his funeral. Yeah, is that yeah, it's just like some some I don't know what it is. There's just some people out there like they they can't do the thing like like. If it doesn't appear on the screen, it's almost like they don't think it happens. And it's like, you know, some things just kind of like, they don't need to be said because it's like, we assume you get them, but obviously you're too fucking stupid to get it. So I guess maybe we do have to show it. It's like the classic, like, how did Bruce Wayne get back to Gotham? Like when he climbed out of that hole, he's fucking Bruce Wayne. He walked, oh, also, in, he, he walked into any airport, slapped his dick down and just said, give me a fucking plane ticket. I own also, this bitch. Also, he got he got all the way around the world with no training and no money in the first movie. Yeah, 
So there's that, you know. But there's, so, there's so many things. It's just like, I don't know. Like, think it I'm already, the box. I'm already seeing shit like that for this movie. And it always happens with time travel. But fuck it. Whatever. You know what? It's a movie. It's, and it's a fun movie. It's a good movie. But and I like, just going back, like I said, I like how they address the, yeah, go fuck yourselves. We, we, we know. We know. There's even the part where um, when they see the Hydra agents, like, crossbones and some of the other guys come in at the end of a oh what look those guys are there at the end of the first avengers and they're grabbing loki specter and all that mm -hmm. ant-man says like wait these guys are hydra agents and you're just giving them the sphere the the the, the, the staff i'm like well we didn't know they were bad guys at the time look at them you can tell they're bad guys <laughs> so it's like i like how they even like you know like i said they just acknowledge that shit like yeah okay whatever moving on it's kind of funny because, you know, it's like with the whole time travel thing. It's like we mentioned how like before it's like how Ant-Man and Wasp. Like I've ever just kind of been like, man, if there was one Marvel movie you didn't see, it's that one. But I love how that really is actually like <laughs> kind of like a major part of how this whole movie sort of works is because of the Ant-Man and Wasp movie. <laughs> is that that? Well, yeah. I mean, granted, you know, you know what I mean, though? It's like, I mean, I'm not saying like movie wise is different, but just like what happens in that movie is really like what brings the technology to how they're able to go back in time. You know, and how technically, like, Ant-Man is, like, trapped and being saved from the, um, being destroyed, being disintegrated. Well, it's also one of those things where it's, um, I, I, it's also kind of like, it kind of quickly explains away some shit. Because this movie, even though there's a bunch of movies that came out before it, like, my girlfriend, we went to go see it on Saturday. It, she's only seen maybe four of the MCU movies, and very random ones kind of out of nowhere like black panther civil war she watched endgame oh not endgame uh infinity war on a plane that was her first that was her first marvel movie just watched infinity war like i'm on a plane fuck it it's, it's probably it's, confusing it's, as fuck but it, whatever it's gonna <laughs> it'll, it'll kill some time and then um uh uh uh, uh guardians Guardi like guardians or black panther yeah so it's Going into this, there's some stuff, like, there's some references and nods I didn't get, but at the same time, I was able to piece it all together. Like, and I, the, the, you don't need to see Ant-Man and Wasps to figure out how they do it, just because they quickly explain it away within, like, two sentences of exposition. Which I think is kind of good, because some of these movies, it's like, I noticed that, like, I think especially for people who aren't, like, into comics whatsoever, because that's the other thing you always kind of forget, too, is, like, you think just because, like, if you're into comics, you can pretty much jump into any of these ones and sort of get an idea. But if you really don't know the comic characters to top it all off, it can be kind of overwhelming, I think, for a lot of people, especially if you missed out on a lot of movies. Mm hmm Well, I'll say this. It can be overwhelming, but, and, you know, this movie's definitely not just for anybody just walking in and like, let's see what this one's all about. But it's weird, because I know people who feel obligated to go see it. Like, they've only seen a handful of Marvel movies, but people are making such a big deal of this movie that they gotta go see it apparently yeah well it's definitely got that kind of going for Peer it. You, pressure type shit yeah you know that people are gonna see it just to see it and so on and um but no it's like overall though i feel like because it's like okay like it's like yeah I, I, there's some like minor complaints to it but for the most part it's a still a pretty strong solid one you know it's it's up there with like avengers 2 I feel like Avengers 2 and Captain America 2 are like my high bar and Civil War, like like Marvel movies. Or yeah, Marvel same Studios thing. movies. Pretty much any, any movie with Captain America in it, just about. <laughs> yeah, generally anything that has Captain America as a primary character, I, I realize those are all my favorite Marvel movies. Because, yeah, because I, I liked Avengers 2 more than, Infinity, more than Infinity War. But this one's, and he was more of just like, hey guys, I'm here, you're going to see me in a, cool, cool, a couple of cool action scenes. And this one, it's like, no, 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 no. He's like, him and Tony Stark are the main characters. And this is a scene where Tony Stark is like one of the best characters of this movie. Yeah, no, they did. I feel like Tony Stark is really dialed in on this one. And just the way that, like, you know, kind of once those five years go by, he's like, fuck you guys. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, we lost everything, but I'm moving on, which I think kind of like almost the right attitude at the same time. Because I will say, it does have that kind of like. I mean, like, it, it works. I know people, most people are like, oh, I want them to bring back the characters to die. Like, I would have gave them so much credit. They're like, you know what? These characters are fucking dead. They ain't coming back. Like, that would have been just such a ballsy approach, being like, Shit happens in life. Get fucking used to it. You get one Spider-Man movie, he fucking dies. That's just the story. That's life. <laughs> that, like, I mean, like, if, if they just did, just went like, yeah, like, life ain't, you know what I mean? We can't just magically turn back time like a fucking, you know, Cindy Lauper song or something like that. Or, I mean, I'm... Cher. Cher, that's what I meant. Yeah, Cher. Like, Cindy Lauper has some about time. Yeah, yeah, time, time after, after time. You can't go time after time on this. 
You know what I mean? So it's like, like I want to give him kind of credit because that felt like sort of like the like the Iron Man thing, and then like it comes around. I, I like how it's like when Iron Man like thing, but he's like, no, I ain't gonna fucking help you guys out. You guys go do it. Oh, whatever, Tony. We'll go. We'll get Banner. Whatever. He's got big fingers, you know. Other than that, though, he. He, he can get this going. And then I like how Tony's washing dishes. He sees a picture of his dad, but, like, his dad's not good enough for it. Then he sees a picture of Peter. He's like, I miss my boy. I miss my boy. <laughs> my boy that could have been. <laughs> he could have been my boy. Instead, I have a daughter, but I could have had a Peter. <laughs> I'm coming to get you, Pete. Coming to get you. <laughs> that, that's what it is. It's turn- Just goes running out of the house yelling that. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> well, that's that's when he is- abandoned his daughter to get a teenage boy he met, like, twice. That's really what happens. He literally abandons his, his daughter so that he can have Peter one last time. <laughs> he can have he can adopt a boy. <laughs> if he lived, he would have, like, adopted him. Like, guess what? I'm going to dick Grace in your ass. <laughs> you're living with me now. <laughs> but I got an aunt. No, you're living with me. I'm going... <laughs> Well, you, yes, your, your aunt can live with us, too. I mean, I'm not saying anything against that. <laughs> Did I tell you, over the last five years, we've been Mormon. More than one wife. You know, Pepper's into it. She likes girls, too. It's all good. Yeah, so it's it's okay. <laughs> no, but uh, go, going back to this, I'm surprised they had the balls to kill off Tony Stark. I thought maybe they would kill off Captain America, but I had a good... I had a sneaking suspicion what was going to happen was they are saying this character's going to die, that character's going to die. I'm like, all right, everybody's going to die... Hawkeye or Captain America. And then moving forward, I was like, I mean, or what they could do is most of the characters live and maybe they'll you'll see him as a mentor figure. Or like, oh, Iron Man lived, but he's retired. Same thing with Captain America. He's retired. But this one is just like, no, no, Iron Man fucking dies. I'm like, what? And like, I was so, I'm not going to lie. When he died right there, I was holding on it and I was almost more... Everyone around me is crying, and I'm just very watching very intently. I'm like, don't let this be a joke. Don't let this be a joke. Because I was partly expecting him to be like, yeah. oh, oh, God, sorry. I snapped out of that for a second. I was partially expecting that. Yeah. And they don't do it. And there's a fucking funeral. I'm like, holy shit. It, it, it sounds weird. Like, I, that was the character I, I personally was expecting to die was, you know, Iron Man. And the reason I say that is because it's kind of like, if you're going to call this, like, Avengers Endgame and it's an end of a saga... Well, who does it really technically start with? Robert Downey Jr. That that's sort of this universe's main character. Like we all want to say, like, because I think as a comic book fan, it's like you think of Captain America being the main character, but he's not technically the main character. He's sort of like he's the secondary character. It's almost like, okay, you know how like in Batman v Superman, it's like okay, it's technically supposed to be a Superman movie, but we all know that Batman shows up and kind of pushes him out of the way. That's almost sort of mm-hmm. how it is here, where it's like okay, you know, Tony Stark's the Batman. You know, Captain America is pretty much the Superman of this. You know, it, it, he's close, but it's still at the end of the day Tony Stark. So I'm not really saying that's like necessarily a bad thing, but um, so I I sort of felt that if there was a character that was gonna die, I actually kind of expected maybe more characters to die. Kind of only it's like I mean I guess two two characters is a lot for a movie for them to die. You know what I mean? Shit. <laughs> not gonna so the parts. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like a bitch admitting this, but the parts I cried on were it was the part when um. Happy turned to uh the, to uh Morgan, Tony's daughter. She's like, "What do you want?" She's like, I want some cheeseburgers. Like, I'll get you a cheeseburger. Dad, your daddy loved cheeseburgers. Like that part, because going back to Iron Man, I remembered it. Going back to Iron Man when he first gets back to America, he says, "I want a cheeseburger. First thing I want, American cheeseburger now." So that little callback right there. You know, I, then, I just want to say, since you mentioned that, when I, when I first saw John Favreau in there, the first thing that went through my mind was like, oh shit, Foggy's. I'm like, oh wait a second, that's not the... <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thing. I was like, shit, they brought Foggy back. Oh, wait a second. Nope, never mind. He, he was, was happy. Yeah, that, that's, it. that's his character in Iron Man, but that, <laughs> that was my initial thought. I was like, what the fuck's Foggy doing here? Mm-hmm. Where's Ben Affleck at? That's... I kind of got a little misty-eyed when we saw... Hawkeye's family die. I knew it was happening, and I was kind of dreading it because I knew we were going to see them die. And I was getting a little misty-eyed there, but at the same time, I knew like, guess I knew like, okay, at least we got Ronan, so we broke even, you know. <laughs> and then we uh, and then there's the end where this isn't even like a thing that made me sad. This is just thing that just made me pure fucking happy, and that is right when you hear uh, Sam on Cap's radio. He says like on your left and then all the avengers come in like all the marvel characters in this new cinematic universe all come in and for the first time in 11 years that he says avengers assemble and they all come charging at him 
Yeah. No, that, that got me a single tear. Not going to lie. Well, because that's the thing is like, here's the thing. Ten years ago, if you would have said Avengers Assemble, that would have been the time period where we'd be like, that, that, that's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? It would have mm -hmm. gone across the same thing as the um, the Lone Ranger movie when he says, um, Hi Ho Silver. And he's like, no, oh, never do that again. You know what I mean? Because that was that time mm -hmm. period where for some reason, like, catchphrases weren't cool. I don't know why. But that was just the era it was. So now to see it kind of come full circle and nobody see nobody gives a flying fuck. That's just what they want to see. Is they want to see mm -hmm. Captain America yell Avengers Assemble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, well, that right there is just pretty sweet. Well, also, it's one of those things where I think maybe. Maybe it was that. Maybe I th also think they're trying to make you kind of want to hear it. But then trying to cock tease you with it. So when you see it, like, oh, it's just not these six people. It's fucking everybody in all these fucking movies, you know? So I think that right there was also the thing. Like, okay, they were teasing you, but it was for a reason. Because the the even Avengers 2, when they all get together, he's like, Avengers, he opens his mouth. Like, he's about to say assemble, then it cuts the credits. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. that, that was the other way to do it, too, back then. Was like the, like, oh, he's going to say it. And they're like, oh, no, we just cut the credits. Which is, I always thought was like another, like, just stop, stop, just do it. Don't. Apparent, I listened to the audio commentary one day with Joss Whedon because it was just that kind of day. And Joss Whedon said, like, oh, that was meant to be kind of a tease because we're not done yet. I feel like when he says a symbol, we're done. So I'm leaving it open for that. And I guess I'm not sure if that's his idea or Kevin Feige's, but yeah, there it is. Hmm. Interesting. This, I'll say this is the first time I've watched. I mean, I know they're making more Marvel movies. I know a lot of these characters will be back and. One way or another, we'll probably have another Iron Man or another Captain America in 10 to 15 years. But um, this is the first time I actually had a sense of, like, gravity to a movie sequel, really. Well, and I think the nice thing, too, is this kind of leaves it open for, like, a lot of the other characters. Because here's the thing. is like, you could only have so many characters. You know what I mean? They're, no matter what, there's only so much time, so much money, and so on. So... It's kind of nice to eliminate some characters. I mean, sadly, you know, you're eliminating Captain America and Iron Man and so on. Uh, but the upside, though, is it gives kind of like a chance. It's like, oh, well, maybe we can get some of these other characters that wouldn't normally have a chance in the spotlight to have a movie now. You know what I mean? Maybe people mm -hmm. actually have more care for Falcon. And maybe people actually have more care for Hawkeye now because of this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get into a Disney owns everything kind of uh, conversation here, but... With uh, Fantastic Four and X Men now owned by Disney again, that they just bought themselves at least another ten more years. So. Oh yeah, that's true fuck, too. Fuck it, fifteen with X Men and X Men spinoff. Well, shit, because because X Men's got that. That's why I always feel that X Men should be separate from like the rest of the Marvel because there's just too. There's so many X Men, and the downfall is if you combine it with the rest of Marvel, then you just lose out on like mostly all your X Men characters. And then the other thing too is I always feel that the I just always feel the mutant thing throws off everything else because then it makes it like, well, is Spider Man a mutant? Well, he's bit by Ray Spider. Well, maybe that just happened to be a coincidence, and that was just happy when he was 13 fucking years old or something like that. You know what I mean? It's like I, I think, and it's like that weird thing where it's like, well, we we, we like these superheroes, but we fucking hate these mutants. <laughs> <laughs> these dirty degenerate non super soldier like living like people of power so i always think that like the mutant thing has never meshed well i think with the rest of the marvel thing i kind of like like fantastic four is one of those ones i feel like you can either place them in one or the other either place them with the x-men or place them with like the rest of marvel they can kind of go both directions i feel like what you can do because yeah that's the thing because we're cool with these superpowers but not these superpowers i think the thing with this movie is with with the marvel cinematic universe we're at the point where, oh, there's, we're, I think phase one through three is people getting used to the idea of super people. Like, okay, there's super people. All right, I guess the one thing you can do with X-Men is you can go, oh, you know what? Um, it's cool seeing them on TV, but one of them goes, sits next to my kid in school, and he just might blow that fucking school up. What, what the fuck are we doing about that? I think that's a way you can kind of present it like, okay, this is why we're suddenly kind of nervous about, you know, I mean, I know that's kind of where that, that's initially what the X-Men come from in, in general, but I'm thinking that's maybe a good way to present it in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know what? I think th this sounds like kind of an odd way to go about it, but I feel this would be the most like the, almost the easiest way to kind of get the best of both worlds is to make the X-Men world like an alternate dimension. 
in a sense, so that it can all happen in there. But then when you want to pull your Wolverine and put him into the Avengers, you just have fucking, you know, Ant-Man go get him. You know what I mean? I, you know, you, you could make it more complicated than that, but you, I think that's almost the better way to go about it. Because here's the weird thing: you go, well, shit. Like, why was there never a mutant this whole time mentioned throughout? You know, from World War II on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, it's it's such a conundrum. Unless I guess you start off day one with the mutants, and I don't know. I guess one of those things may have been hiding out this whole time, or who knows? They might actually. That might be because th- I've heard heard him say, and who knows how much of it's bullshit and how much of it's true. But I've heard him say things like, oh, we're planned all the way through Phase 5, so it's going to be a little while before you see anything with Fantastic Four or the X-Men. But, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I can see that maybe being like the next, we got to reset shit again! And maybe from there, that's how they get the uh, mutants going or something. Maybe that's where they decide, okay, now it's time to recast Captain America and Iron Man again. Well, they could even do the thing, too, to be like, like they didn't notice this, but when they fucking shifted time... That's what created the mutants. A shift in time made, like, change people genetically or something. Yeah, like, like that shit. Maybe even this. When Captain America went back in fucking time, at the very end of the movie, that fucked it up and created mutants. So that's why you get Magneto in World War II, and that's why you get Professor Xavier and so on. Yeah, yeah, that might be, that might be a good answer to that. That, that. that could be kind of an interesting way to go about it. Is that, that, that one t- Something happened when Captain went back in time, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah oh no anyway overall even though i we both had some complaints this is definitely a fucking fantastic movie so oh yeah i, I definitely enjoy it. i mean just even the part just seeing cat america grab the hammer of oh, the fucking hammer scene that was so it's like it's like right then and there that's like that's that that if that was all you got in the movie that's all you need this that movie had so many audible fuck yeah moments throughout it like what? especially that final battle like Right when you see, because they were even kind of teasing that, because that happened in the comics. That happened mm-hmm. where Thor couldn't reach the hammer, Captain America grabbed it and threw it over to him. Like, oh shit, he's worthy. Well, that, that's what, then, what I just think about the two is like, fuck yeah, America's worthy. That, that's what I see right <laughs> That's like totally one of those ones you see, like, fuck yeah. You, you, don't see, you don't see any other countries fucking able to pick that up, do you? <laughs> well, just that scene with him with the hammer fighting, like, you know, because you're watching it, you're like, okay. Captain America's strong, and he can out strategic, um, he can out strategy Iron Man. But you know, but at the same time, you let you know he's fighting Thanos. Thanos could take a punch from Hulk, and he could fuck up Hulk. How's he gonna do this? Like, oh fuck the hammer. Yeah, and it's just like that right there is just so awesome, especially when he gets to use the lightning and everything too. It's like, oh, it just tops that off. Like that action scene's really that. That's really that movie. At the, I think that final battle's really where. It's totally at because the thing is, is there's some there's some little actions throughout it from from the beginning, but like you know there is some kind of like a little bit slow part. It has that kind of thing where like the movie probably didn't need to be a three hour movie. It probably could have been really dialed in at about like a two and a half, maybe even two forty or something like movie. I don't know. I feel like everything in that movie was. I mean, all right, maybe aside from some of the jokes we talked about. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I I'm saying was... like light trimming. You know what I mean? Like not like mm-hmm. a. I guess I'm not saying it's like there's like there's not there's nothing like big in there, but there's probably some stuff that you could kind of just cut down a little bit. Maybe maybe even like a two hour and fifty minute, just just a little bit of stuff because there is. I'm not saying it's like it's dull, but there is like stuff that it's like there's kind of like a moment where you're waiting for that build up, you know. I'm gonna say all the beginning stuff where they're just kind of hanging out in mourning. That that was really effective, and I think that was very necessary. I'm gonna the part the the last. Because it's really a four act movie. The fourth act, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say this when when the cavalry comes in, I assumed it was gonna happen. Was okay. They fought Thanos. Cavalry is gonna come in. We're gonna see these two armies charge at each other. Each character is gonna get a cool moment. To, we already see him punch somebody, and then we're gonna see Iron Man, Captain America, whoever finish off Thanos. But then it's like oh. Oh, no, no, we're not done. I thought that was going to be like, okay, this will be over in five, like, you know, in like three to four minutes now. Like, no, this is going on for a while longer. You got to sit down. You got some shit left. Yeah, exactly. And well, I was glad about that because I was like, okay, this is wrapping up. Like, oh, no, it's not. Shit, it's still going. Well, you know what's the other really weird thing I thought that was not addressed in this movie whatsoever, but maybe it'll come in like, you know, other movies and so on. Okay, when everybody kind of like, they bring people back to life. Well, there's like the people who have been there for five years where like fucking mad max has been taken on over and then there's the people just kind of come back be like oh okay i'm ready to go back to school now because that's gonna be the weirdest thing is like like i think they almost should have like 
showed that with like Peter Parker. Maybe they'll do that in the next Spider Man movie. But they should have made his friend like be like, "Oh, hey, I'm 21 now. Hey, Peter, mm-hmm. I didn't, you're still fucking 15 or whatever." Maybe he's held back. What do you mean held back? Held back in, in a couple of grades, and you know he does he doesn't he he doesn't age that you know he maybe ages gracefully. He's fat in Hawaiian. He does. You yeah. can't tell his age. Can't tell. Is is he fifteen or thirty eight? I don't know. Well, then there's like there's that kid that like when Ant Man comes back, he's like, the fuck is going on? And everything that there's that kid on the bicycle. He's like, hey kid, what happened? That kid just has that look like death. We all know about <laughs> death. <laughs> it just fucking pedals on like a hundred yard stare like at eight years old. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like those kids are not gonna be fucking be able to relate to each other anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> that that's like the example of like there's kids that went to the concentration camp and survived, and kids that just went to like fucking Disney World for like a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it ain't gonna be the exact same experience. Oh shit, bro! You got on the wrong train. <laughs> yeah. You should, well, that one had a mouse too. Well, yeah, they, they you know they were using tactics. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's that mouse though. The, what's his name that made the comic? Oh shit! I'm drawing a I should have piece. I think it's actually called Mal, Mouse. Yeah, Mouse. It's spelled, it's spelled weird. Yeah, exactly. What the same mouse? But um, but yeah, I just want those ones. Like, I feel like that. I feel like if they don't do that in the next Spider-Man and like address that issue, that's that's like such a lost cause for because so, that's kind of like very interesting. It's like almost. There, it reminds me of, like old school Star Trek slash like Twilight Zone type like stuff. I feel like they're probably just going to address it in a way like, oh, you know what? All the kids and the, they all just have to be snapped together. Maybe this is a field trip for all the for all the snappy kids to get back into the world. I don't know. Well, because that's the thing. There's like all these law. The other kids like if, okay, if you went to high school with somebody and you're 15 years old. Well, now this other guy's 20 years old now. He's not in fucking high school. Oh, yeah. That's probably going to be a convenient thing because just conveniently all the Aven- all the original Avengers were not snapped. But maybe it's like, oh, Peter and most of his class was snapped. So now they're back like, oh, OK, cool. You know. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I just I, th- I just felt like that right there is just an interesting concept. And if you don't use it, it's kind of like, oh, that's kind of a bummer because I just feel like you could do all sorts of weird stuff with that kind of stuff and just making it like, as I said, I, I think Peter's friend should have been like 21. He's like, Peter, where you been, man? I fucking like I ate a Wanna dead build body a Death star still. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, he's, just, he's like, no, I don't want to build a Death Star. I had to kill people to survive. You don't know what it was like. <laughs> I had to eat a child. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I ate a child and I didn't care. I didn't cry. <laughs> that was I had day no two feelings. of the snapping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't know what to do with myself without you, Peter. <laughs> you weren't there to stop me. <laughs> you weren't there to stop my hunger. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing stops the hunger. That's great, Nick. Want to go to class? Okay. <laughs> but um, but no. As I said, I think the cool thing about this though is this leaves it open to hopefully, like in a sense, having like other characters. I mean, granted, like we're gonna see more Miss Marvel and we're gonna see probably more Black Panther and those kind of characters because they they're sort. Of, I mean, Miss Marvel's sort of like the Deus Ex Machina character just to show up and destroy a ship. But well, um, I remember some people were 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 like nervous and upset that like. Oh my god, they're gonna make her fucking be the hero and save the day out of nowhere and she just got here. I'm like, no, they're not. They're smarter than that. They know that Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor have worked their way here, so it's gonna be one of those three to finish it off. She's gonna have her moment to shine, just like everybody else, and then take a few punches to Thanos, and then that's when what happens happens. Yeah, because that that would have been like one of those ones. If they would have had her like grab the hammer or something like that and just trying to be like very like Trying to be like proactive, like, well, maybe America shouldn't grab the hammer, but it'd be like, be like, whoa, no, whoa, 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 don't you fucking dare, you take away fucking Captain America. That's a fucking World War II veteran, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Not many of them left. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, Miss Marvel's Miss Marvel, whatever, but still, it's like, no, no, you, you, keep, you keep her in her fucking place. You know what I mean? Shit. Get Rogue out here, the Zorber powers, that's what I'm fucking waiting for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. We'll we'll get there though. Let let her just like let Rogue just get like zap all her powers. Like okay, you don't need these no more. I got yeah. it. Bye. We can get rid of this Marvel and we can have the good Rogue finally again. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it's like it, it all kind of works out. And there's all kinds of neat scenes. And even, this is the other one too. Is this is Rocket is done really well in this movie. Like because he's the kind of character that can say funny shit, but it, his stuff never breaks the fourth wall. It just seems like natural. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when he says a joke, it's like, okay, that just feels like his character. That's like something, cause that's just the kind of character he is. He's a super intelligent animal 
that kind of just has like you know copes with like I guess you would say comedy and stuff like that. Like I get that character making. It's, it's one you got kind of other characters like whipping. I'm jokes. surprised they didn't have him and Tony Stark talking more shit to each other. I, well, they kind of do the thing where they just, like, pair him and Thor, which I will say, the Thor-Rocket-Raccoon mm-hmm. combination. I know that, like, I'm kind of like, Thor shouldn't be so comedy, but it's like, oh, well, if you put Thor with Rocket and you make it badass, where I feel like you can have Rocket be kind of, like, your smart and kind of, like, funny guy, and then have Thor be the strong guy and maybe just have, like, the good one-liners and so on. Like, I feel, I, I would love to see just that movie. Minus out the rest of the Guardians, I'm not saying anything against them, but just, like, literally just do... The, the Thor rocket movie solo like kind of experience. Maybe Groot too. Yeah, same as Groot kind of would go. He he's fine. Just make Groot fucking adult. Like it's a fucking teenage Groot shit out of here. He'll be in the next movie. That, no, but I'll say I thought I was I thought it was actually kind of a what was the it was a Tony Stark total Tony Stark joke. But I thought I was like I'm sorry. I thought I thought it was a t- Teddy Ruxpin for something. He said something like that. When oh, he he's, he's, he's like he's like did that Build a Bear just fucking talk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it was, something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, see, that, that's one of the jokes I felt like, it's, it's weird how it is. It's like, well, those ones, like, that's a joke that I, I don't feel like it took me out of the movie. That felt kind of just natural. Where it, mm-hmm. I think it's like one of those ones, like, because they gave, like, War Machine some just weird fucking jokes. And it's just like, that character just never came across as a character. It's like, I'm just going to say goofy jokes during, like, times of crisis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll say, even though I like War Machine, I like Don Cheadle, and Avengers 2 is one of my favorites. I'll say that he has one of the most driest, most boring deliveries possible in that movie. There's a part when he comes and like, oh, cool, War Machine's here to help you out. He's just like, War Machine, coming at you. You see him like flying through like, can you get another line on that, Don? Like, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm fucking tired. Can we just call it good? Like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. He says, he sounds so bored. There's a part where he's shooting fucking robots, <laughs> Ultron robots in a metal robot suit. And he says, War Machine, coming at you. Just like that. <laughs> I'm not making it up. Just like, all yeah. right, well, whatever. You know, they can't all be winners. Maybe, exactly. Maybe, he, maybe he was trying to think of something clever. Is warm? Coming, coming. I just thought it was like that's just what came out. You know? Yeah, and the thing is, is like, it's like I, I like War Machine a lot in there. I'm like always excited. It's like you know him, Falcon. I feel like they're the kind of those like side characters that are totally awesome. They just don't get enough screen time. I guess they fit in the Hawkeye category. <laughs> the Hawkeye this category. This time they did. They, they managed to give him a moment in here. Yeah, I mean, shit. Even Winter Soldier got to shoot a gun like three times and. <laughs> That was, his, that was his moment. He shows up and he's shooting fucking bullets. And it's just like, well, shit. Yeah. All right, we should probably wrap this up right here. But yeah, but yeah, good stuff to be had. Obviously, this is like that movie where, you know, probably everybody's going to probably see it and their mother. And I just feel Disney's like, hey, how much money can we make in one year? We're going to have this movie and then we're going to have Star Wars kind of end us And too. Lion King. Yeah, well, yeah. That's gonna make a lot of fucking money. I don't care what, yeah. how much you like it or dislike it. It's gonna make a fuck ton of money. Well, it's yeah, it's just it's just like the Aladdin movie and so on. But um, I guess it's not like it's that's like one of those movies like you know that not everybody's gonna go to that. Like everybody's gonna go to Avengers and everybody's gonna go to Star Wars. You know, Lion King's like mm-hmm. there's there's like an audience that's gonna go to it, but not most people, or not or yeah, not most people, but like not everybody. Let's say that. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, good fun stuff. But till then, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, comics, comics like Pizza Boys, and all that other fun stuff. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. We'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Sure, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, animation, and a whole lot more. We also have the Old Man Orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff. If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again, we're out of here.